Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I am so excited to share with you how I made this hand-woven throw pillow. So let's just jump right on into it. So for this project, we're going to need 100% cotton warp thread, ideally the non-stretchy version. We're also going to need a medium weight yarn in the color of your choice. Wool roving in a super bulky weight. As you can see, this one changes colors as you thread, which I liked. We have it in two colors here. We're going to need a tapestry needle. We're also going to need a weaving loom. Mine is linked in the description, but I've also shared a video of how you can make your own weaving loom for a lot less money by using a picture frame. We're also going to need some fabric for your backing, ideally in a medium weight, a sewing machine or a needle and thread if you plan to hand sew, and an optional zipper. So to get started, I am just tying a large knot at the very end of our warp thread, as you can see here, and that is just so that it will hold in between the teeth at the top and the bottom of this weaving loom. So I'm going to make a big enough knot that it doesn't slip through, and then I'm just going to go all the way across top to bottom and loop our warp thread through. When we get to the end, we're going to do the same thing, tie a knot, and that will secure it all in place. So before we start, we're going to take our stick or our piece of cardboard and we're going to loop it through our warp threads and it's going to go over, under, over, under, all the way across until we get to the end. And when we're done, we're going to twist that piece of wood or the piece of cardboard and it's going to separate the strings. This will make it easier for us to put our threading needle through as we start to weave. So the first thing we're going to do is loop our threading needle with the same thread that we used for our warp thread, so that 100% cotton thread that we used at the beginning. And we're going to do about 11 rows of this. You're going to take your threading needle on the right side of the tapestry and you're going to loop it all the way across through the gap that is created by the piece of wood or the piece of cardboard. So if you looked at this sideways, you would see that there's an opening between the threads and this is just gonna slide right through. There's no going over or under at all. Once the thread is all the way through, we're gonna pull it all the way across and just leave about a two inch tail at the very end before we go back the opposite direction. And so for this, we are going to go over and under, over and under, all the way across, like you can see here. And I like to pull the thread through as I go, just so that I can make sure that everything is nice and tight as we make our way back from left to right. So I'm using a comb, but you can use your fingers just to lightly tap the row of threads together and make a nice straight line at the bottom. We want to keep these threads nice and loose because if you go too tight, then the weave and the tapestry itself will start to bow inwards. So at the very ends, you can see that the loop is very loose and we want to make sure that we continue doing this as we move up in the tapestry. So for this pillow, I'm going to be doing a striped pattern. So I'm starting off with a light gray yarn like you see here, and I'm going to repeat the same process. We're going to loop through and in between the warp threads at the beginning, moving right to left, and then moving left to right, we're going to go over, under, over, under, all the way across, and then stack the yarn like we did with the warp thread. So as you can see here, we're making sure everything is nice and loose and straight, and that just will make sure that the final tapestry doesn't have any bowing to it. It will be nice and square. For this, I think I ended up with about six rows. And we're going to continue that with the contrasting thread. So in this case, we're using a roving, a wool roving that I found at Joann's. And I really liked this one because it had multiple colors threading through it. And to measure each piece of yarn that we're using for this tapestry, I am just wrapping it around my arm six times. Wool roving is a little bit thicker. So you can see here, it's a little harder for me to pull the threads through once we get going. But because this is a thicker yarn, this stripe, so to speak, in the pillow is going to be a little bit thicker than the gray thread that we used previously. So again, we're just gonna repeat this process 
right to left we're gonna pull through left to right we're gonna go over under over under and we're gonna continue all the way until we run out of yarn and that will leave about a two inch tail at the very end so this process looks like it's going pretty quickly but this probably took me about an hour and a half to get going make sure everything was straight and loose all the way through so that I didn't have any warping so you're just gonna want to take your time and make sure that you do this as slow as you need to in order to make sure that the final product comes out nice and straight and perfect like you want again this roving thread is really beautiful because as we go up it's going to change colors so even though the gray the light gray stripe is going to remain a constant color all the way through we're gonna have a lot of variation with the other stripe made by the wool roving so here I'm just showing you from the side even though it's still very hard to see when you're moving right to left it's gonna be very straightforward just running that thread right in between the gap made by the piece of wood or the piece of cardboard you're using once I get to about the size of the pillow I want to use and I'm going to make sure that the tapestry is large enough to wrap around that before I start to tie off the back. So you'll see here all of those little tails that are created at the end of each piece of yarn fall in the back and we're going to have to tie those off and make sure that they're hidden in the back of the tapestry. Then the next step is to unloop it from the warp itself. So I'm gonna show you here. You're just gonna tie it in a nice little neat knot. Each of the little sets of warping threads that come off of this loom. So we're gonna take our threading needle and run it through a channel of the thread behind the tapestry. Basically, it's going to go in the loops of the yarn behind the warp thread which is kind of hard to describe but hopefully you'll be able to see here how it pokes through the back then we're going to take the little tail and loop it through the thread and then pull it through that channel that we created so it will tuck the extra little tail into the tapestry itself and hide it so i'm going to show you a few more examples here and hopefully you'll be able to see a little more clearly how i'm trying to describe this process this will make the bottom nice and neat and then the front you won't even see where the tapestry ends we're going to do that on the top as well and this is going to be our final piece of tapestry so our next step is actually constructing the pillow so for this i'm using some linen fabric that matches nicely with my tapestry as you can see here and I'm going to cut it to be the approximate size of the tapestry itself. So I'm measuring it and this one was 12 by about 15, I would say. So I'm gonna cut the fabric to be about the same size with my fabric scissors. Then for this project, I am actually going to be putting an invisible zipper on here because I'm using a sewing machine. If not, then you can totally skip this step, for, but for those who are, I'm going to stick the invisible zipper onto the fabric with some pins and then I'm going to go through and sew this right onto the tapestry itself. Because we cleaned up the ends and made it nice and secure, that allows me to sew right onto this tapestry and have it come out nice and clean and even. It is obviously thicker, so I'm going a little bit slower than normal and I'm making sure that I have plenty of stitches going through this so that it's nice and secure on both the tapestry piece and the backing. So as you can see here, the pieces are sewn together and I'm laying it out so that I can make sure that the corners are nice and straight before I go around the edge and sew the sides and the back together. In order to do this, we leave a little opening in the zipper like I showed at the beginning and that makes us able to pull the pillow inside out once everything is stitched together. 
Again, I'm going really slow because this tapestry is very thick for my sewing machine, but as you can see, I'm able to sew right along the edge and it ended up working out really, really well. I did a lot of tight, neat stitches and that made sure everything was gonna be nice and secure. We're gonna trim off the tail of our zipper and flip it inside out, pushing out the corners with my fingers to make sure that everything is nice and square. So last step is to stuff this beautiful pillow and this is the final result you guys. It looks absolutely beautiful and I'm really really happy with it. And I am really excited to make more of these. I think this came out really great and it worked out far better than I thought so I'm super excited about this project. I hope you enjoyed and if you did be sure to give this video a like or subscribe for more videos. I try and post every Sunday and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.